In this video, I'll be doing the maths question you see on the screen here from paper two of the 2024 Maths Leave Insert exam. If you're looking for a different question from this paper, check out the playlist in the comments below. I'll be doing all this on a whiteboard, hopefully like you're used to your teacher doing. But remember, you're not in a classroom here, we're on YouTube, so take advantage of that. Pause, rewind, watch a half speed or watch a 2x speed. If you do find these videos useful or any of my videos, I would greatly appreciate a like or subscribe, but especially I'd appreciate you sharing it with a friend doing the Leave Insert or doing it next year. Question six, part A, uh, tells us about a line uh, that's been divided in a ratio of one to three. The, this, let's draw any line here. A to B, the line is, starts at A, ends at B. We don't know B, we're actually looking for that. And we know A is one to 13. And uh, it's divided in a ratio of one to three. And that's what this point here is C, uh, six, 11, C. Um, so this length, for every one in this length, there's three here, is what, is what they're saying, basically. Uh, what's B? Um, there is a few ways to do this question, as there often is in uh, um, lots of these questions. Um, there's one, it's so easy, it's so simple, uh, one of the ways. And the other way is just messy and awkward. Or, uh, sorry, there's actually a, I guess there's one way is easy, the other way is easy enough, and then there's one really awkward way, which you'd never do, but I, I'll, I'll say it when we're here. Um, so first, the, the quite simple way. Um, it's simply saying, how do you get from 113 to 611? And you get there by going plus five on the X parts, and minus two on the y parts. So where do you get when you do that three times? So when you do five three times, it's like doing 15. When you do minus two three times, it's like doing minus six. Where do you get to? You get to 21 and you get to five. And that's the answer. That's the answer to part A. You're, you're done at this point. There are other ways, which I'll, I'll quickly show you now. Um, in fact, well, this one, let me do this one again, just in case anyone's unclear. I drew myself a little picture to help me here. Uh, 113, let's put it here. Uh, 611, let's put it here. And uh, the answer we happen to know, 215, let's put it down here somewhere. Um, this is meant to be a straight line. So I, something like that. Oh, it's meant to be one tree as well, isn't it? So let's say here. Okay, so that's one tree. Um, just to help you understand this way first, because this is the best way to do it. I want you doing it this way. All this is saying it's going five minus two. That's what it's really, we drew this one crooked. This is the more correct way to draw it. Uh, five minus two. Three of those is just going five minus two, five minus two, five minus two, which is the same as going. So instead of five, five, and five, that's the same as 15. Instead of minus two, minus two, minus two, that's minus six down. That's, so that's why, if you're wondering, how, how do I know I'm allowed to do that? Well, it's, it's quite uh, straightforward, uh, visually speaking, why you'd be allowed to do that. Anyway, that's the answer to part A. Uh, um, a slightly more difficult way to do that, there is, a, there is a formula in your table book talking about line segments and splitting them in ratios. Uh, I won't do this way, but I'll just write it out. Bx1 plus A, uh, x2 over B plus A, and then the same for the y's, uh, yeah, By1 plus uh, Ay2 over B plus A. So this is saying that if you take x1, which would be the one here, let, let's do it for the, this side here. Um, AB is the ratio, so one to three is AB. Um, so B is three. Three, x1 would be the A part, would be one, that'd be three times one. Plus uh, A is one, x2 is unknown. We don't know what's the final answer here. So that'd be, we just call it, uh, uh, one times x2, x2. Three plus uh, one is four, but we do know the answer. We know the x's would get six as an answer. Six here, multiply that across, we get a uh, three plus x2 
equals 24, x2 equals 21. Same answer we get this way, just a lot faster that way. And uh, uh, the third and really messy way, but unfortunately a way a lot of students probably would have tried, um, like not lots, but like a significant number, say two, one or two percent. They would have said to themselves, ah, this distance is one and this is three. So let me get the distance formula between these two. Um, and that's, that's a good enough idea. The distance between these two, you find out what it is and you multiply it by three. And you tell yourself, ah, that's the distance between this unknown and this one. And you might put that into an equation. Um, x, x and y, uh, the distance between these two equals some answer you've got. The problem is you'll end up finding an equation of a circle around this point. Um, now you could, you could use that. If you find the equation of this line, which should be easy enough to find, equated to this circle you've just found, you would find this intersection. And you get an answer. It's not terribly long, but it's, it would certainly be longer than this and even longer than this one here. Anyway, let me clean this off and we move on to part B. Okay, in part B, they keep this one quite simple. Um, they just give you a point and give you a line and ask you to find the perpendicular, perpendicular distance uh, from this point to this line. Um, you don't have to draw it, but let's try and draw this out. It has a y-intercept of minus 11, so somewhere down here. And has a slope of 1, uh, sorry, a little more than 1. So it would go up something like this. And this point here is 5 minus 2. Actually, you know what? I don't know if it's this side or that. I'm guessing it's somewhere here. So if we zoom in on that, we have a point and a line. Um, Straight away, the easy thing to do is hopefully you remember, or even if you don't, look up your book. Uh, there is a formula for the distance between a point. The, how do they phrase it? Um, yeah, just say the distance from a point to a line. Um, but it's the shortest distance or the perpendicular distance here. You could try and figure this out on your own. Maybe um, draw some lines like that. Uh, I Actually, I don't know how to derive this formula, but it must be doable. So you could try and figure it out on your own. I, won't, I don't know how to, so I won't try and show you. We'll just use the formula. The uh, formula tells us that this distance from a point to a line is ax1 plus by1 plus c, the absolute value of that. So if there's a minus, turn into a plus, which I think there is in this case, over square root of a squared plus b squared. Now the only problem is what's a, b, and c and x1 and y1. x1 and y1 are what you'd expect. x1, y1. What's um, a, b, and c? They, well, they tell you here. It's the, it's the numbers in front of the letters in an equation when it's wrote out a certain way. So if we write this out, 4 over 3x minus y, uh, yeah, they're all the same, minus 11 equals 0. So if we write it like this, x, y, number, zero. A is simply four over three, B is minus one, C is 11. Now I, I would say though, four over three is nasty to deal with. So instead if you do this equation of a line, uh, three minus 33 equals zero, sorry, three Y. Different numbers, yes, but you'll still get the same answer. Um, you'll get different numbers on top, different numbers on the bottom, but it should balance out because this line is identical to this one. So you don't have to deal with fractions. So to fill in this, we would get uh, four times five, that's uh, four from here, five from here, plus minus three times minus two, uh, plus uh, minus 33, and it's the absolute value of that. I better get my notes uh, to check uh, the right answer. Uh, divide this then by the square root of uh, 4 squared, that's 16, plus um, oh, minus 3 squared, which is 9. Um, let's see, we would get 20 minus 6, sorry, plus 6, yeah, okay, plus 6 minus 33, divided by square root of 25, which is 5, okay. Clean this up, then the top row we would get minus 7. Just put all this in. Absolute value of minus 7 over 5. 
which equals 7 over 5, which again equals 1.4 if you want to put it in as a decimal place. Okay, nothing else to say about this one. Use the formula. It's the only way I know to do it. Um, you can look up where this comes from. It shouldn't be too difficult to do. Um, I'm guessing it's something about uh, something about uh, right angles here. Uh, right angle in there, equating lines. I, I might look it up myself. It's interesting to me. It's probably not interesting to you, but <laughs> maybe it is. Anyway, I'll clean this off and we'll do part C. Okay, in part C, uh, they explain that they have a grid here, numbered one to four. Yeah, I don't have my numbers in. Uh, numbered one to four, and there's a dot at, um, at every point MN, where M and N are natural numbers, meaning they're not zero, they're not one and a half, they're one, two, three, and up to and equals to four. So one, two, three, and four. So we get all these uh, 16, yeah, they tell us that, 16 dots. Um, right here. And they ask us a couple of questions about that. First question they ask is, how many different pairs of points can be picked? <laughs> it's hard to say that. How many pairs of points can be picked from these 16 points? So, like quite simply they mean, you can pick this one and this one. Or you can pick this one and this one. And you can go on quite a while there. Uh, a few ways to do that. Uh, let's just think of the most logically. There's 16 there. How many of them could I pick first? I could pick 16 first. How many could go with that 16? If I picked this one, there's 15 more that could go with it. And that's where I would sort of get an answer. I would get, uh, I don't think I brought it down, but I remember it. Well, I should have wrote it somewhere. Yeah. Um, it's 240 is the answer here. Now I checked the marking scheme. They will take this as an answer. It's not the answer I would give though, because it counts this one with this, these two, twice. This one to there, and this one to there. It counts it twice, which maybe it should, maybe it shouldn't. They're, they weren't quite clear. Like for example, if their directions going from one place to another isn't the same as going back, it could be uphill, downhill, things like that. But in this question, they just said pairs. I would take that to mean that this is the same as that. But again, the marking scheme says this answer is okay, but the better answer they want, divide by two, equals uh, 120. Because you don't want to count, you're counting everything twice this way. And an even better way to think of this is, think of the dots as just people. We know how to choose two people out of 16. Um, it's 16 choose two. Uh, it's on your calculator or, or it could be written as uh, 16 choose two. Um, I'm sorry, 120 is the answer still. The first answer, 240 again, would be 16 pick two uh, or uh, P two. Um, um, I can't think of what P stands for, uh, numeration. P -nu P no, it's on the tip of my tongue. I can't think of it. It doesn't really matter now. But basically one of them is if it matters what direction it is. So uh, if I have a green ball and a blue ball, it's no different than a blue ball and a green ball. But if I put numbers in order, one and two is different than two and one. One is 12, one is 21. Anyway, the answer here is 120, but they will accept 240 if you think that's the right answer. That's fine. Um, okay, on to part two. Part two, they say the two points that we picked um, will be joined with a line. So there'll be a line going from there to there or something. Find the probability that that line is horizontal. So this is a great question. You can actually answer this by just counting them. There's not that many of it. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll show you that way first and then we'll use a bit of maths to, to do it. So how many horizontal lines are there? We can split this up into four parts. This line, this one, this one, and this one. Answer any one of them, because they're all identical. And we'll just multiply our answer by four. So if we, let's draw the first line again. How many straight lines are here? Um, you know what, let me, let me draw loads of these so I can, these are all the first line, if you know what I mean. Uh, what is the answer again? It's uh, six, so I need six of these to show you all of them. So how many, again, this, I'm just, just one line here. I'm just gonna do it six different times. How many straight lines can I find? Between there and there, 
between there's a this point and this point, this point and the last point. Um, this guy can't go to there because I've already done that. But that's a new one. From there to there, that's a new one. And then can't go to here, I've already done it. Can't go to there, I've already done it. I can go to there though. There's six different ways to do that. Another way to say that is you have four points and you're choosing two or four choose two and uh, get calculator will tell you that or you can just count them up because they're quite small here it's just six there but remember there's four different lines because this could happen on the top line it could happen on the second line third or fourth so the answer is actually uh, four multiplied by four choose two which is equal to four times six, which is equal to um, 24. Uh, yeah. And so the probability, there's 24 ways that you could do what they asked you out of a total of 120. Um, 24 divided by 120. Um, how many times does that go in? It goes in, um, I haven't actually done this. Uh, I guess it goes, four goes in, uh, six times and four goes in 30. Oh, six goes into both of them, then one over five. So there's one in five chance of getting a horizontal line. Oh, yeah, uh, by the way, if you did have 240 as your first answer, that's okay, but you also better get 12 here. So instead of using C, choose two, you should be getting four P. Um, Perm permutations is what P stands for, came back to me, uh, and that equals a 12. So you'd end up with, instead of 24, you'd end up with 48, no, I don't have that wrote down anywhere. Um, yeah, I assume you would. 48, 48 times, sorry, 12 times four is 48. 48 divided by 240 should still be one over five. It wouldn't have changed anything in the probability. Okay, uh, hopefully, hopefully that made sense. I thought that was a really cool, interesting question. Um, all the C's are really, they're, they're little puzzles, they're little tricks. There's not, they're not something you can just learn off. You have to just solve a puzzle. So hopefully I helped uh, explaining what happened there. Um, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments uh, or point out any mistakes I made. Thanks for watching, have a good day.